Περνάμε στην επόμενη εισήγηση με τίτλο σε ΑΒ, ελληνική κοινοπραξία Orsid. Εισηγητή Λεωνίδα Πισπυρίγκα, Software Developer, Network Technologies and Infrastructure Manager στο ΣΕΑΒ. Hello, in this presentation, me and Mr. Nabil XB from Orchid will outline a quick review on what has been accomplished in the two years of Healing's consortium agreement with Orchid and we will present the next steps for 2021 on the basis of further enhancing Orchid integration to the universities. We will also demonstrate best practice uses of ORCID from top international institutions and collect any feedback you may have. As I have already mentioned, we signed the first consortium agreement with ORCID in 2019, which is annually renewed since then. The 2020 agreement includes 42 institutions with the latest measures incorporated. The consortium agreement provides significant membership fee discounts for the universities, And in return, the consortium lead organization, Healing, takes responsibility for the consortium administration, the governance and the community engagement. Healing, as the consortium lead organization, promotes and establishes ORCID as the primary unique identifier for the academic and research community in Greece, accentuates the advantages of using ORCID for the research community in Greece, employs dedicated community management staff and develops shared resources, communication materials and events. Additionally, Healing works with its members to identify goals and develop policy and governance for the diffusion of ORCID and in addition of the permanent identifiers in the research community in Greece. Also establishes regular progress reporting to members and ORCID. Encourages, Healing encourages its members to integrate ORCID to their IT systems, systems Use the ORCID API to exchange information and help researchers manage their ORCID records and also provides, with the help of ORCID, basic support to its members during the integration process. Until now, we have already two ORCID integrations working and in production. These have been implemented by the Quality Assurance Unit of Aristotle University of Thessaloniki and the Hardman Research Data Repository for the academic institutions in Greece. The level of, of the implementation of the Quality Assurance Unit of Aristotle is on connecting the ORCID record of the researchers with their record at the IT systems of the Quality Assurance Unit through authenticated ORCID ID. The level of implementation of the Hardman Research Data Repository is on connecting the ORCID record of the researchers with their record at the Hardman Repository through authenticated ORCID ID and also insert the Hardman URL profile of the researchers To their ORCID records. There is an ongoing extension of the integration of the Hardman Research Data Repository in order to include the ORCID ID of the researchers in the metadata of the datasets which follow the data site schema. This way, the researcher's ORCID record will be automatically populated with the datasets metadata when the researchers deposit them to the Hardman Repository. Our actions for 2021. We aim to ensure that the members experience all the benefits of their premium, premium market membership. Our goal is to identify any possible IT systems at the universities that are eligible to integrate with ORCID. For this purpose, we will organize a webinar with an interactive session, including an ORCID assessment survey. The purpose of the survey will be to acknowledge how well ORCID is understood and implemented by the consortium members. There will also be an extended survey for the main contacts of each institution aiming to retrieve the IT systems that are actually used in repository and publishing. This way we will be able to identify any potential systems that can be implemented with ORCID, explore the challenges and roadblocks that a consortium member each, that each institution is facing, and also propose solutions and guidance to help involving our institutions with all things ORCID offers. Here you will find the dedicated website for the Healing and Orchid Consortium Agreement and our support email and also the community forum in Orchid for Healing. Now I will give the floor to Mr. Nabil Xibi from Orchid in order to continue the presentation. Thank you very much. All right, so thank you, Leonidas, for the introduction and uh, thank you, Paul, for this opportunity. 
to be with you today. So I'll be uh, going over what is ORCID, in essence, how ORCID is beneficial for the institutions and for the researchers. So to start with, uh, what is ORCID? Uh, ORCID is a non-profit open organization led and run by the research community. Uh, ORCID pr also provides researchers with a unique and persistent free-to-use identifier. Uh, this identifier connects them with their uh, affiliations, contributions, funding works and all uh, other facilities and uh, very reliably and clearly. Uh, there is also important to mention that ORCID is not an author profile or an authority check. The only uh, check that we are doing is when the researcher or the user is losing access to their records, whether by forgetting the password or, password or by forgetting the ORCID ID. So there we are requesting from this user to provide a um, piece of identity. It's It can be a um, driving license or student card or passport or anything proving that this individual is having access to that ORCID record. Uh, then ORCID provides open tools like ORCID IDs, registry and APIs that allow transparent uh, connection between researchers and identifiers of their activities and contributions. Uh, we'll see more in details um, what is that or registry and uh, a, an overview or a kind of um, um, yeah, introduction to the API or uh, the application programming interface of um, ORCID. Uh, then ORCID provides a persistent digital identifier, uh, an ORCID ID, uh, that the, research, the researcher is owning and controlling, and that distinguishes uh, this researcher from every other researcher. And as a researcher, you can connect uh, your ID with uh, your professional information, affiliations, grants, publication or peer review, and many more. Uh, you can also use your uh, ID to share information with other systems, ensuring uh, you get recognition of all your works uh, and contribution, and also saving you time and hassle in uh, reducing um, and reducing, of course, the risk of errors when typing these informations. Uh, and um, of course, it's very important to highlight that the ORCID ID is free to use for the individual. Any individual can have uh, their ORCID record uh, to participate or to uh, link it to uh, their research uh, activities and research and innovation uh, cycles. Uh, then again, why ORCID? So in a sense, uh, ORCID is uh, created to disambiguate names and uniquely identify uh, persons and contributors uh, because a name can change in, under different circumstances and as uh, we are moving online, we are uh, spreading our identity here and there and it really depends on the forms that are um, accepting my name. Some forms are not accepting the middle name some forms are um, accepting uh, some kind of writing. So a name can, uh, can be written um, you know, in different ways and also a um, name can change under different circumstances as you can see here from PhD to assistant professor, then marriage, then uh, US professor, then migration, then uh, professor in another university and then um, a retirement. So this 16 digit is participating in making this contributor um, having a unique, uh, let's say, identification. And of course, all the variations of my name, I can write it in my ORCID record in the also known as section. And how, how ORCID works? So uh, before everything, ORCID is a registry of unique persistent identifiers. Uh, for researchers. ORCID is also a hub that connects researchers with their contributions, their activities and then professional uh, activities. 
then it's a, a global community that enables uh, researchers to share their uh, contributions, data, um, and uh, all it is linked to their um, activities with other uh, individuals, organizations, and systems. Now, if you can see, here's the researcher, uh, everything at the center of uh, all what we are doing. Uh, and you can see here the employer can connect and collect information from the ORCID record of the researcher, of course, with the permission of the researcher. And this information that is asserted by the employer can be used by the publisher uh, and can also be used by the funder. Uh, so if we go back to the publisher, uh, they can also assert information and publication to the ORCID record, of course, with the permission of the researcher. The funder also can do the same. They can assert uh, grant information and award information into the ORCID record of the researcher and can also collect information to assess this um, grant and assess this um, uh, funding or awards uh, assertion. Here are the uh, systems that are uh, really uh, can be um, integrated with ORCID and uh, I mean in the um, university and repository and CRIS systems. On the publishing side we also have uh, these systems like uh, the editorial manager, OJS, Scholar One, uh, e-journal press, Genway and review. Uh, and of course, if you have any uh, other system or custom system, please get in touch and we can uh, look into this uh, together. Uh, this is the workflow that is uh, showing uh, really the interoperability that uh, the ORCID integration is offering. So as you can see here, uh, it starts from the authentication from the uh, uh, researcher. And uh, as soon as this authentication is done, the uh, organization can uh, display uh, the ORCID IDs and display anything related uh, or showing that uh, this integration is live. Uh, then as soon as um, these display uh, guidelines or display features are in place, uh, the employer or uh, let's say uh, the university or the institution can assert work or assert affiliation into the ORCID record of the researcher and can also collect information if they want to build a, a profiling system or a, a CV central system uh, fed from ORCID. And the last phase is to synchronize uh, where um, we the, the researcher will just have to uh, look into their ORCID record or even receive notifications saying that uh, an information is updated on their ORCID record and the system, uh, the university system as well, will be receiving a notification as soon as the ORCID record is updated. So um, uh, to, to have at the end this researcher uh, basically to enter once their ORCID record or the 16 digit uh, um, identification of uh, their own and their uh, work and to see this information flowing uh, according to those phases uh, and um, yeah this, this workflow is also uh, very similar and uh, um, is practically the same for funders and for employers and publishers. So where the publisher will assert here a publication and the funder will assert here a uh, funding uh, or awards ID or award grant. Uh, and in more in details here, so the researcher as soon as uh, they grant permission to the university or the funder or the publisher, uh, these institutions can use this permission uh, for the example of the university to connect affiliation on the ORCID record of the individual and as you can see here this affiliation is uh, also having uh, the necessary details and relevant details uh, to identify the university and to identify the source at this university that uh, asserted this employment. The same thing for the funder. So as soon as the funder is having permission to uh, 
connect information they will be uh, able to connect grants and assert funding and as you can see here there is a lot of information regarding uh, the uh, funder and the grant ID and the source which is uh, this funder uh, and also the same thing for the publisher where uh, after having permission this publisher will connect publication onto the orchid record of uh, the individual and um, with a source uh, stating this publisher and with a DOI and uh, everything that is related to this publication and this work. Now to explain also uh, the uh, auto updates. Uh, so as soon as the researcher is linking their ORCID ID to uh, an editorial uh, system, and this editorial system is working with Crossref or uh, data site to obtain a DOI, uh, then this information will be automatically added to the ORCID record of the individual and instantly. And this is really showing how uh, using this auto-update uh, functionality, the user and the author can benefit of uh, having the information and having uh, yeah, the data uh, asserted in their ORCID records in a very, um, uh, very fast and quick way. So Crossref, a uh, DOI uh, registration agency, and DataSite is also a uh, GUI registration agency, but more for um, organizations and institutions, while Crossref is working with uh, publishers and journals uh, in, uh, in generating uh, the GUIs. Now, regarding search and link, uh, it's very simple if you go to your record record and try to add works. You can add works manually, but you can also use the search and link, which is a uh, recommended method uh, for ORCID. And you can see that there is a lot of them. Uh, the last one was added by uh, HAL, by the French uh, Archive um, Institution or Organization. And you can use it to uh, retrieve your information, retrieve your uh, publication or works from the HAL archive to your ORCID record. And it's the same thing for uh, all the other search and link wizards. Uh, here you can see the type of assertion and after uh, doing this uh, process, you can see that there is a lot of information guiding my work, like the description, like uh, the GUI, like the source of the work, like the contributors, and when it's added and when it's last modified. So everything you need regarding the work will be asserted via this search and link wizard. Now search and link uh, wizard and funding workflows. So here you can see this is the permission that Dimensions wizard is requesting from uh, me, for example, to add or update research activities like works, affiliations, publications, etc or uh, and read uh, information with visible uh, visibility set to trusted parties. And as soon as I click on uh, authorize, I will have the dimensions wizard. Uh, I'll be redirected to the dimension dimensions wizard for ORCID and where I can uh, complete my registration here and allow this synchronization between dimensions and my ORCID record. Uh, here, an, a very important example of uh, thesis and dissertations assertion using a DSpace repository. And this example is from King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, uh, KAUST, where they uh, asserted, uh, for example, here, thesis and dissertations in this work. And you can see here that the source is KAUST repository. And you can see that um, there is a DOI uh, linked to this work and there is a handle also linked to this work. So this is very important uh, because um, CAS did build this patch for uh, the ORCID members to allow them basically to assert all these types of works. 
from the working paper to uh, the uh, journal articles to, to patent reports and everything you want to assert in the ORCID record of your researcher can be done through uh, your DSpace repository and of course using this uh, patch from uh, CAST. Uh, now the statistics for uh, Greece. Uh, if I search in the ORCID API, uh, I will uh, with this email domain I will find that uh, there are almost 340, 340 ORCID IDs registered with this email domain, and this graph is showing that uh, this number is uh, increasing. Uh, but uh, the next slide, which is this one, is showing that uh, not all of the users that are that built that, that graph are using. Um, um, yeah, not all users that are interacted with the ORCID registry in Greece are using their uh, institutional email. Some of them are using some personal emails like Yahoo, like Gmail, and a result of this, you can see that there are. Uh, um, 1,324 ORCID IDs, for example, registered with uh, APT um, University and with this uh, Ring Gold ID. Right. So uh, it's very important to know which uh, system or which email address the users are using, and if you uh, wish to guide them to use the institutional email address, then uh, um, it's very simple to add the second email address to the ORCID record without creating another uh, ORCID record. Uh, then this is a kind of an overview on the ORCID membership categories and the main, let's say, difference between uh, the basic and premium membership are the five API accesses that the premium member can benefit of. And of course, the webhooks uh, notification that the integration, uh, the uh, premium member uh, integration can have. Uh, also, um, a, um, a, an increased support uh, in terms of uh, yeah, in terms of assisting in the integration and in terms of uh, orientation. Uh, and also regarding the analytics reports, uh, it will be a monthly, um, on monthly basis for the premium and premium consortium, comparing to twice annually for the basic member. Uh, then um, it's very important also to highlight the uh, importance to, uh, of authentication. Uh, and as you can see here, three uh, different authentications. One is from Europe PubMed Central, where they asked for these scopes, including reading my information set to uh, trusted parties and adding or updating my research activities like works, uh, affiliations, publications, etc. Uh, the same authorization uh, is sent from Crossref, but with different, uh, let's say, yeah, with the same uh, scopes here. Uh, and as soon as I authorize, I can um, yeah, I can let Crossref metadata search to synchronize my information from my um, yeah from my publications that I have on Crossref uh, on Crossref side to my ORCID record. And uh, this is also a uh, third uh, authorization where uh, Athena RC. Uh, is requesting to get my ORCID record and is requesting to add or update um, my information like uh, country or keywords, etc. Uh, then uh, also around privacy, so uh, ORCID Trust is a uh, reliable registry, is a community responsibility, is a, uh, an information integrity and is also uh, uh, and, uh, an individual control. Uh, and uh, when talking about uh, interoperability, it's very uh, also important to uh, highlight uh, the benefits of the integration in funding and grant man management systems. 
like here in the uh, NRF South Africa where uh, the NRF did build the system uh, and as you can see here it's automating the automated there is no manual entry from here and the same thing for the African Academy of Science as you can see here the researcher profile is linked to uh, their ORCID ID via uh, this, um, yeah, this, this integration. Uh, now, talking about the DSpace patch and um, how you can use it for your DSpace integration. So, uh, it's very simple. We just need to go to uh, GitHub or uh, Google, uh, uh, you know, with some keywords telling uh, ORCID support for uh, GSpace patch and you can add cost and it's very simple, there is a video uh, demonstrating how to activate this patch and um, there is all the links that uh, um, are relevant for you to finalize your GSpace integration using this patch. Um, I'll be sharing with you all the slides at later slides so you can hit on all the sources and explore by yourself. And this is an example of an outreach uh, resource that you can share across uh, the, your uh, network or uh, uh, you can display in your uh, institution or university or uh, journals to encourage and to push for the ORCID adoption. And thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.